Well, 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 it's not a surprise though, except people who didn't follow the campaigns. During the campaigns, Tinubu was the poorest performer, someone that delegated questions to his associates to answer on his behalf. That tells you all you need to know. So his acceptance now that he didn't foresee the enormity of Nigeria's challenges before he took over power shows why we have the trial and error policy of his administration. They try anything they like, they test everything they want. Nigeria's economy has become a giant guinea pig for their testing, testing, testing the microphone. Ultimately, Nigerians are suffering his incompetence and lack of due diligence. This is coming from a man who mocked a fellow contestant, the Labour Party candidate in the past presidential election, Peter B for always talking about statistics and talking about figures in his infamous speech na statistics we go chop there was a thing na statistics we go chop <laughs> by the way this was revealed by his special advisor on information and strategy mr bayo onanuga in an interview with business day newspapers when he was asked, will it be right to say that Tinubu did not foresee the present enormous challenges in the country when he took over in May 2023? He responded in the affirmative, saying, quote, Yes, when you are outside, you will not have the full picture of things until you get inside to see what has really happened, unquote. He said a lot of things that we will not cover in this video because it will be too long. Chief among the things he said that reflected Tinubu's unpreparedness for the job was his instant removal of petrol subsidy the day he took over power. But this wasn't what Tinubu said that pushed him to remove petrol subsidy. He said that the major reason why he decided to remove petrol subsidy was because of a few people, people that were so powerful more than the Nigerian state. These people were beyond police arresting them or other security agencies. So because these people were making money from petrol subsidy, he decided to push the inefficiency of the state to Nigerians to bear the cost. Meanwhile, the Nigerian government still spends about 17 billion naira per day on petrol subsidy, while Nigerians are buying petrol at more than 600 naira per liter. Before he announced the removal of petrol subsidy, petrol was being sold for about 200 naira per liter. We were still paying for petrol subsidy then. Today we are still paying for petrol subsidy. Why is petrol being sold for 600 naira per liter? Where is the excess savings going to? Are they going to account to Nigerians after all they told Nigerians to bear the cost? More transparency is needed here. Nigeria is a teat. The last 40 years. Some very few people were cornering our commonwealth, calling it subsidy. I call it wasteful and thievering. Governance isn't hard. Forget the fact that Nigerian politicians like to make it look like rocket science. It's very easy to convince Nigerians because Nigerians are good people. They just want the good life. Why can't politicians give it to them? Politicians must live by example. You cannot be telling people to buy Nigerian-made goods while you people concentrate on traveling abroad all the time for the slightest problem. For medical treatments, they like to buy foreign goods. The other day, the National Assembly bought hundreds of vehicles from abroad using scarce dollars that is not even available to local merchants who need them in order to drive down the cost of goods. Today, Nigerians are asking why is the Naira gaining against the dollar like other currencies across the world, but it is not reflecting on the price of goods. This is very, very simple. This is Economics 101. You expect people who bought dollars when it was high to sell at a low price. No, it's not possible. And people are asking why it doesn't happen the other way around. Immediately, the dollar gains against the Naira. Merchants are very quick to increase the price almost instantaneously. Yes, that's how business works. Even local manufacturers that import raw materials to manufacture their products, they always monitor the FX rate. 
This is because when they sell some of their products, they have to convert the Naira that they earned into dollars and use that to order the raw materials from abroad. So even a local manufacturer depends on the FX rate because they use that to import raw materials. Likewise, imported products. Merchants that placed order for goods in January or in February, it takes an average of three months for the manufacturer in China or Asian country where the product is manufactured to manufacture the goods and ship them till it arrives Nigeria. So if the person placed the order two months ago or maybe in February, consider the exchange rate in February. That's the exchange rate the person will calculate in order to fix the price. Otherwise, he will lose. That's how it works. No one is in business to make losses. People are in business to make profit. So what it means is that people won't see a price reduction in the market till about a few months. That depends solely if the Naira continues gaining against the dollar. Exchange rate stability is very, very important. Before people can build confidence in Nigeria's economy, the exchange rate must be stable for at least six months to up to one year. If that happens, then expect to see price stability in the market. People will no longer be thinking about FX rate going up and down. They will say, ah, it has been stable for the past six months. That alone will make people have a lot of confidence in the economy. Even government business will be affected. There won't be any need to be adding a lot of overhead costs in procurement in other things because they know that the price in the market is stable. It has been stable for a very long time. It will continue to be stable. In Western countries, most products have maintained the same price for the past 10 years or more. Despite all the inflation, they have maintained the same price. That's how it works. That is how it should work in an emerging economy like Nigeria if we had exchange rate stability. Coming back to why Nigerians are good people, we know where Tinubu met the exchange rate. The exchange rate was about 700 Naira to $1. That's not even the official exchange rate. It was far lower than that. But right now, he took it up to nearly 1,900 Naira and to where it is today. And people are already saying, hey, he's doing a good job. Despite not taking the FX rate to where he met it, not to talk of improving on the value. So this is why politicians treat Nigerians anyhow they want, because they know that we have very short memory, that we always take everything and say, okay, hey, he's doing good, let's support him despite all the hardship he brought on Nigerians. Everyone wants Nigeria to work for everyone. How do you achieve that? You achieve that by holding the people in power to account. If you don't hold them to account, they will behave anyhow they want. Look at what the National Assembly members are doing right now. Okonjoiwala was here in Nigeria for a few days. She visited Kaduna. They couldn't find ways to sit down with her in Abuja and discuss whatever they want to discuss with her. Instead, they had to use cash dollars and estacos to travel to Switzerland to meet her. Maybe this discussion just took a few minutes or maybe two hours, but they must spend that estaco. They must travel abroad on the scarce foreign exchange that Nigerians need. Despite the fact that Nigeria is broke, but the way they spend this money, you will be saying, ah, Nigeria is not a poor country because it is very unjustifiable. People that want to save money will even ask Okonjoiwala. After all, she's a Nigerian citizen. They will say, ah, please help us to save money. Whenever you're coming to Nigeria, let's discuss what we want to discuss in Switzerland. Let's do it here so that we save money. But no, they must be lavishing the money and spending it as if it is their own money. So this is the problem. Leadership should be by example. When you're telling Nigerians to tighten their belts that there is hardship, but there is hope that after a few years, things will turn around, at least leaders should start with themselves. Let them tighten their belts first before telling Nigerians to tighten their belts. They are busy spending the money anyhow they want, throwing parties, traveling, enjoying all the good life, and they turn around and tell Nigerians, no, you have to do the opposite. You have to live in poverty. Despite the fact that Nigerians didn't cause all this, the political class put Nigerians in poverty and are still turning around and telling them continue being in poverty till whenever hope comes. Which hope? I have the hope. I'm not worried about the exchange rate that I should because the salary should be in Nigeria. Eh? And you are not an importer or export.